Okay, this is just a demonstration panel of a number of our environmental protections that you might use when using general purpose stress analysis gauges and or transducers. The first one here is M-Code A, that's a polyurethane material. Uh, it cures with the moisture in the air uh, and forms a fairly uh, good environmental protection for laboratory conditions and short-term exposure outside. The second one is M-Code C, this is an RTV. It's basically 3140 by Dow Corning that we've thinned with naphtha to make it so you can make very thin coatings. It's capable of high temperature, up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's the lowest reinforcing environmental protection we offer. Now if you look carefully, you'll see there's M-Coat B over half of it. A lot of times you'll use the M-Coat B, the nitrile rubber material, as a vapor barrier. The RTVs use moisture in the air to cure them, and so they will absorb moisture with time. So having the M-Coat B over the top of it makes it a better vapor barrier. M-Coat D, it's an acrylic material, uh, typically used for laboratory conditions and or short-term exposure outside. I like it because it's white, and when you've finished a strain gauge installation, you know for sure. If it's still brown, it's not finished. If it's white, you're done. The next one is a system. This is M-Coat F. Underneath this aluminum foil tape, there's some a neoprene rubber, and underneath that, there's a butyl rubber sheet. And that butyl rubber sheet is the environmental protection for moisture, then the neoprene rubber is for mechanical protection, and then finally you put the FA2 aluminum foil tape over top of it, and finally enhance that with the M-Coat B around the edges to seal it up. This material is good for outdoor applications like uh, transmission towers and things that are going to be out there for a while, and you need to have the environmental protection be immediately working when you finish. The butyl rubber in here uh, tends to uh, cure in, in a couple of hours and be ready for use immediately. The one next to it is FBT. Now this material, if, if you can hear, it's still sticky. This material is a uh, the thinned butyl rubber. It comes in a uh, toothpaste, the, the consistency of toothpaste in a tube, and you take a spatula and you smear it out. This is a favorite of the uh, transducer manufacturers because it's a very good vapor barrier, but it offers almost zero reinforcement, so it's not going to change the uh, characteristics of your high-precision load cell. However, it does collect dirt, so you typically would put it in a load cell with a can. The next one is a two-part polysulfide epoxy material. It's our M-Coat JA. It was originally designed for sealing jet fuel tanks, but they've, uh, we, we used it for uh, protecting gauges uh, for environmental protection. It forms a durometer of a hard street tire. It's still flexible, but it's an excellent vapor barrier. The one drawback is its resistance to ground characteristics are poor for the first 30 days. So you want, might want to be sure and understand the instability that might occur then. The next one is W1 Wax. W1 Wax is our very best vapor barrier. It's a microcrystalline wax, and we use it as a reference when we're checking out new environmental protections. Uh, use the W1 wax as the reference and then use the, te the questionable environmental protection with it. If it's nearly half as good as W1 wax, it's a pretty good environmental protection. The one drawback to the wax is it's very easily mechanically, you can stick your fingernail through it and it melts at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have, to have a high temperature test, it's not going to last. Remembering the M-Coat C, this is the 3140 that it's originally made from. It's a Dow Corning product that is self-leveling. It's, it's a liquid material almost. The next one beside it is 3145. These two have essentially the same characteristics in terms of high temperature resistance and flexibility, but the, the 3145 has a filler in it so you can put it onto a vertical surface. If you put the 3140 on a vertical surface, it would run off. It's unusual, but we do have environmental protections that are actually adhesive systems also. This is AE10. It can be used as an environmental protection. You'll notice that it's quite dark. Over time, it does absorb moisture, and that's the color turning darker. This particular uh, demonstration is over 30 years old, so that's why it's a little dark. It's sister adhesive. AE15 requires an elevated temperature cure, but you can see from the fact that it's a little less dark, it absorbs moisture more slowly. The next one is 43B. This is an, uh, an epoxy phenolic adhesive system that has a filler in it, a little bit of colloidal clay, and this is used typically in deep cryogenic applications where you have a deep cryogenic test, you want to have a fairly thin environmental protection that's not going to disrupt or crack when you go to those temperatures. The last one is our GA61. 
and you can't really tell it well from this picture, but it has fiberglass cloth inside of it to stabilize it. The reason for that is this is an elevated temperature cure epoxy, and as it cure, is, is curing, it expands at about 50 parts per million. And as it cooled off, if you didn't have the fiberglass cloth in there, it would fracture. Similar to what like a mud puddle when it's drying up in the summer and you see the clay on the bottom of it fracture into little plates, the same thing would occur here. This is the favorite of the automobile manufacturers. Inside the head of an engine, the crankcase, the transmission, the differential, it resists gear oils and gasoline and glycol and those things. The one negative is reinforcement. Because it's so, uh, the fiberglass cloth tends to make it uh, stiffer, you wouldn't want to use it on a thin section or a low modulus material. Now this is just a short uh, dissertation on some of our environmental protections. We have others that are in our catalogs and you can go there for the specifications. You pick the environmental protection based on the environment you're going to expose it to. Going all the way from air conditioned room temperature to in the inside of an engine or differential exposed to high temperature water and or grease. There's our environmental protections.